Oh, you gotta love carburetors. This is the 1968 D100 swept line short bed. A gem in the rough. A few things we've got going on with the old girl is the gas pedal, the brake pedal, and the driver's door. None of them operate. The gas pedal's floating in the air at some weird angle. And I'll go ahead and show you guys that. The brake pedal, more of a suggestion box than a brake pedal. And the driver's door, not opening. We previously had the issue of it not closing. I was able to take care of that off camera, but now we can't open it. We will be turning this truck into a race car. I figured I would film it and share it on YouTube. If you guys would like to keep up on the build, go ahead, like, and subscribe. If you've got any comments or suggestions on anything you would like to see done to the D100, go ahead and leave them. After we have our fun with it, we will proceed to take it apart bolt by bolt and fix every piece of metal currently wrong with the body. And there is a lot currently wrong with the body. But she's still beautiful. She's going to make one hell of a race car. I'm excited. First thing we're going to look at is the driver's door. It's currently not opening. Nice. What even is that? Look at this. They just, well, they did whatever they wanted to. Okay, what about the other side? Well, that's pretty standard. And why would you paint over it brown? What are you thinking? Why would you paint over it brown? Who would, who would choose brown over this? All right, whatever. So all we're doing here is adjusting the height, trying to get it in the magic area where everything lines up and operates correctly. So what we had was a little bit of some roughed up threads. cleaned up the threads on here. We put the spacer on the correct side. Now we're able to actually lock the bottom in, which is allowing the door to hook. We now have a door. And I don't even want to talk about what's going on over here. We got a door. It opens and it closes, which is double the amount it did before we started. So our gas pedal is about eight feet off the ground. All the way compressed, you've got, I mean, that's at least three, four inches. Not in the best shape. What's behind here? So it looks like we got a couple bolts, but so far we've not had great luck with bolts on the truck. So I might not take those bolts out and save that for another day. I'm gonna see if we can get some leverage in here.
Have you ever seen me wax a car? No. You're not gonna. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Unless it's a new car, I don't care about the paint. I want it to drive. Why is it red? That's the paint. Huh. I don't think it's supposed to do that. That is the master cylinder. So what's pretty neat about this truck is that it's got a hydraulic clutch. I had a 96 Ford Mustang that had a cable clutch. It went out and it was literally the cable that broke, just like you would have on a bicycle for your brake lines. And the clutch was operated by a bicycle cable. This is a 1968 using a hydraulic clutch. So instead of doing the push-pull effect and using the bike cable to pull a lever down by the transmission to engage and disengage the, the clutch, it uses a hydraulic fluid with a piston that moves the clutch in and out on the other side. So it's pretty neat to see a hydraulic clutch on a 1968 because when I was 18 driving a 96 Mustang, I didn't know anything about hydraulic clutches, and now I own a 1968 that has a hydraulic clutch. So when I opened this up and seen the two reservoirs up top, I was like, what in the world is that one? Turns out, 1968, they had hydraulic clutch. So what I want to do is bleed all four brakes and see if we start to get a pedal back. I don't necessarily want to even take the wheels off and check the calipers or anything. I just want to get the brakes to have some sort of a pedal. It should have brake drums in the rear. What does it have down there? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. We've got drum brakes front and back. Turds. <laughs> Turds. <laughs> They're not good. Oh. They're not good. They're not good at all. It actually feels like we're getting. We're actually getting We're actually getting a pedal. Okay, so we're gonna bleed them and that might be all we need to do. We know three out of four brakes at least operate. The fourth one, we could not verify. Hopefully we have at least three brakes. Better than before. And it's essentially ready for a test drive. That's not good. As of right now, I'm getting no power to the ignition. Which this big fat one is gonna be my power. So we've got a stubbed out dead wire right here. Well, it's not dead, half of it's got power. This is a solid power wire that was just disconnected. You know, connectors don't do much if you don't crimp both the sides. Which for some reason, there's a lot of that going on down here. So it's weird, we, we had power, we drove it into the shop. We went to start it, it was dead. Came out here, fumbled with some stuff, got it to crank for a split second, and then it went dead again. So everything points to a bad connection somewhere. These stupid little wires, no power going to them. But we've reconnected the big guy, and we now have power on both sides of the big guy, so that's something. To check our ignition, it's pretty simple. We've got our main power wire coming in, 
and you can see we've got power going to it. If we check any of the other various wires, they should all be dead, which they appear to be. And if we put the key in, turn the key on, it doesn't do anything. So here's our main power, which we've got power. Now if we go to the other side of our main power, we should have power. So we've got power there. So we know our ignition is good. And we know we've got power going to the ignition. So we now need to trace whatever the ignition goes to. We've got something interesting going on. When we turn the lights on, the starter engages. So this is currently what we have going on. So this is our wire. That apparently operates the starter because if we add power to it the starter starts and if we add this to this that closes the circuit the starter starts this I believe is the wire for the light okay <laughs> all right we got something so this is our starter wire this is our light wire that's half of the problem we just need to find the other half if we hook power to the lights the lights come on. Let's tie these two together. And now we should reliably have light. What else are we working with here? There's no other, oh there's this guy, which looks like our starter wire. Oh my goodness, stop it. I don't know what this one goes to. I can hook power to it just in case. So now we've got these two which doesn't immediately operate the starter. So let's tie those together and see if we've got starter. That's our culprit, right there, that guy. We're gonna reconnect that guy and we've got a running truck. Oh, we're dumping fuel in there. It should start right away. We did it. There's a lot of metal work this truck needs and a lot of custom stuff the previous owner did. We've got, as you can see, the shag top carpet ceiling. Don't touch it, it will get in your face. The whole entire cab was lined with what you see on the ceiling here. And what's left over is the glue and the silicone and the galvanized sheet metal that came from somewhere. We did it. We got the 68 back on the road. 